Welcome to another edition of Dave's Dungeon. Thanks for coming to our channel, checking us out. Uh, Dave here with Carmelo. He appears to be sleeping. Could care less what we're doing here. Um, before I do any box openings today, I kind of have to do like a corrections department like newspapers do. You know, you go to the corrections and they admit the mistakes they made in the previous issue or, or last week or whatnot. And I just had to clear up a couple things uh, that I've said in the past videos where I was, uh, well, one thing where I was completely wrong and another thing where I've done a little research and want to share what I kind of think I've kind of figured out with you guys. Um, and I also have a little story to tell about the Green Giant family here. It's, it's a little funny, so we'll get to that in a second. We're going to start with Fanta Clown here ad icon that we got a few weeks back uh, I said you know when I opened this I said you know Fanta just makes me think of one thing the insane clown posse and I went on to this, tell this whole story about the insane clown posse performing at the armory that we used to clean in Ashland Oregon and how they made a huge mess with their with their soda main point here insane clown posse does not spray Fanta soda all over their crowd uh, they spray a, a, a hometown Detroit uh, favorite, Fago Soda, F-A-Y-G-O. Uh, I did a little research on Wikipedia, just uh, checked a few sites and whatnot to find out where Fan is really from, because I said, oh, it's from Detroit. Fanta did not originate in Detroit or America. This is pretty funny. I'll start with Fago. Fago is from Detroit. Fago is the soda that Insane Clown Posse sprays on everyone. Fago started in 1907. It's been around a long time. And um, if you lived on both coasts, the Midwest, you'll know that certain parts of the country, we say that we want a, a soda. Uh, here in Minnesota, this is pop. I need a pop. Well. Kim and I lived in Oregon for 20 years and became very used to saying soda. Moved back to Minnesota. Soda, Minnesota. Uh, moved back here and everyone says pop, pop, pop with that Midwest accent. Drives me crazy because I prefer soda. But anyway, the Fago company, more than any other soft drink company, really pushed the term pop. And I guess Detroit among all American cities has the highest percentage of people that say pop instead of soda. But I'd argue that uh, Minneapolis St. Paul has got to be right up there uh, on that list because I nobody says soda around here. Um, so what they did is they came up with three flavors at the beginning. They had uh, they had orange, fruit punch, and strawberry. And the strawberry they called red pop. So if you were in Detroit in 1924 and you're like, oh, I want a red pop. You're talking about Strawberry Fago. So, um, that's the whole Fago story. And, you know, Insane Clown Posse decided to spray it on their crowd and, and wreck buildings with it because they're from Detroit. Fago is this Detroit institution. And they wanted to do something annoying and gross. So, that's how that all happened. It has nothing to do with Fanta. Uh, now, on to Fanta. This is kind of funny, because I, I don't know how many people know this. I certainly did not know this. Fanta originated in the 1940s in Nazi Germany. This is a Nazi brand, folks. Uh, not joking. What happened was the U.S. put the embargo on Hitler and his cronies, Mussolini and whatnot, and they couldn't get the Coca-Cola syrup anymore. After all, it was manufactured in America, probably around the Atlanta area where Coke is headquartered. Um, so over in Germany, they had a Coca-Cola Deutschland. And of course, once everything went down, Coca-Cola Deutschland was part of the Nazi party, part of everything. Everything in Germany belonged to Hitler. So the guy that was the head of uh, Coca-Cola Deutschland decided to use local ingredients from the German region, make their own soda. They can't get the Coke formula anymore, the Coke syrup. They're going to have to do it on their own. So they invented Fanta. Which, uh, Fanta is a, close to a German word for creativity. Uh, all the Nazis were sitting around a table trying to come up with a name. 
for their uh, fake Coke, fake Coca-Cola. And, uh, you know, one of them said, let's be creative. You know, let's be whatever that word is in German. And another guy shout, shouted out, Fanta, you know, creativity or something like that. And it stuck. Uh, Orange Fanta was actually uh, created by the Italians. Because they had, I don't know, more oranges in, in Italy than in Germany. I don't know. But they came out with the orange version. This clearly is the orange version. Fan is most famous for its orange pop, orange soda. And that is a uh, Italy product. But the Fanta name is from Nazi Germany, which is amazing. And I said today, you know, of course, Coca-Cola, after the war, they went in and took their factory back over. And then they relaunched Fanta in 1955 worldwide as a non-Nazi soft drink. And uh, I guess today there's over 100 flavors of Fanta. So, now because of this little pop figure, you know everything you ever wanted to know about Fago and Fanta. So you're welcome. Alright. Let's talk about the Green Giant family real quick, because this is kind of funny. A couple weeks back, we got the Metallic 2-pack. I'll show it off again. It's pretty cool. Um few days later and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the exact figures to show you how this went down uh, a few weeks later we got green giant and sprout this sprout he was in a box his box is no more uh, had some stuff sitting down here our beloved cats got in the room or were left in the room they had some uh, some liver pate or some nasty kind of canned food that they eat. One of them had it on his nose apparently and walked over and smashed up on Sprout's box. Because when I came down in the morning, I picked up the box, this big old brown glob right here, and we hadn't put it in protectors yet. I'm like, what the? You know, and you practically see a cat's nose on there. It was, it was really obvious what it was. So I'm like, oh, what the heck, you know? So I'm like, well, there's no, fi there's no, there's no fixing that. I hop online, I find the cheapest sprout I can find in decent shape, have him sent out. Now, this is the sprout that I ordered, okay? However, I didn't get this right away. What I got was a green giant in a box, but his box is gone now too. Because what I decided, <laughs> okay, we'll back up a second. We get a green giant in the mail. It's supposed to be Sprout. I don't notice. Kim doesn't notice. We're just like, wow, oh, look at this. Look at this Sprout. And I noticed a ding on the bottom. Like I said, I picked out a perfect one, right? I get it. There's a ding on the bottom. And I'm thinking, this is, you know, is this a guy that takes a picture of a clean box and sends out all of his crappy boxes? Or what's going on here? So I sent him a note. Hey, bro, this big gouge in the bottom of the box wasn't on the photo of the thing I ordered, you know, what's up, gave him a five star rating anyway, so you know, whatever, I mean, it, I mean, it wasn't a huge gouge, it was just a little thing on the bottom, but it was annoying, you know, next morning I get up, I look at our new Sprout again, and it hits me, it's not Sprout, it's a green giant, that's why the gouge was there, it wasn't even the same dang character that we ordered, so I hop on to message service again, say, hey man, my bad, I didn't even notice, but uh, you sent us the wrong character. You sent us a green giant, which explains the gouge. So, he wasn't answering me back. Uh, I didn't know if it was my tone. I kind of had my guard up because a lot of times on these sales transactions, these people just, they can just be out there, not, not on the same wavelength with you at all. So I was kind of just being aggressive about it. And I, I went on to his site. And I ordered Chira Imwe, which is, uh, he's played by Donnie Yen, my, one of my favorite guys, uh, from Rogue One. So we got, we ordered him, and I, the reason I did that is I wrote him another message. I said, alright dude, I'll make this really simple for you. I ordered another character from you, even though chances are I might get something different. But I ordered another character from you, so throw the sprout that I ordered in there with the Chira. And then everything is cool. And, you know, I was waiting for him to say, what about the green giant I sent you? And I was going to have to freak out on him. But luckily, he said, keep the green giant. 
I'm sending out cure it and sprout. It's all going to be good. So, we took the box with the cat nose print on it, threw it away. We took the gouged green giant box, threw it away. So we have the oob set. And Sprout and Cheer It arrived. Sprout is in great shape. Put them in a protector right away. So, we have the whole deal going now. We got the metallic. We got the uh, individuals. And we got some oobs. So we got the whole the whole situation covered on Green Giant. <laughs> okay, last thing I want to talk about. And I've, I've, I've mentioned this before when we opened some older things. Um, you know, and that is that is the age of the boxes, whether or not they have faces on the bottom, whether that adds value or not, whether anybody cares about that or not. Um, this is, this is kind of involved, but I'll, I'll try I'll try and explain what I'm talking about. Now, me personally, I see an old box like this with a, with a photo. I just I just like that because it tells me it's you know probably the oldest version of that item. And you know, even with these Deadpool's, yeah, you know, these aren't expensive. And the reason they're not expensive is because uh, of they've, been, they've been restocked. Okay, so when these came out way back when, when they looked like this. You know, Hot Topic had this one, PX Previews had this one. You know, they both sold out. And I think, I, I didn't check, but I imagine back in the day, these started going up in value a little bit. You know, exclusive Deadpools. Um, then what happens is, Hot Topic, or Funko, somebody with decision making, I don't know how that works, how the contracts work, but they do a restock where they just print up a whole bunch more and slap them on the shelf. Um, I don't know for sure, because I don't know when this came out, but this might be a restock. It's the same 20. Uh, it's not an exclusive, though. That's a bad example. Um, what I'm saying is, price guide doesn't differentiate between if you have a super old Deadpool like this or if you had a restocked one, you know, where it just came out a couple of years ago and you'd have the cursive logo on the bottom, definitely no picture. Um, and so because of the restock, there's, you know, tens of thousands more of these Deadpools out there and these originals just become worth the same amount as the restock one, as far as I understand. Um, which, you know, that's great because then I can get one of these old ones for nothing. And, you know, for me, it's not so much, you know, the value. Uh, you know, I, I don't care if this is worth $100 or $40 or $10. You know, I like it because it's a unmasked gray Deadpool. And I like it a lot more because it's old and in good condition. So, um, other thing about the bottom of the boxes, and you'll see this discussed all the time, online and I'll see guys that know their stuff that don't seem to know what these date stickers mean and I don't know for a fact what they mean either but I've looked at enough of them um, where I've got a pretty good idea you see two types of these old stickers you see the JJL sticker I don't know if you can pick that up or not but that says JJL 141010 and the, you never see anything else but JJL, so I've seen people go, well, that means July, that means June, July, you know, I don't, I don't believe it does, because you don't see any other things besides JJL or this FAC number, those are the only two letters you ever see at the beginning, and the numbers after them are completely different, so I'll get to that in a second, but these JJL numbers always have six numbers after them, this one's 14, 10, 10. And to the best of my ability, I believe this came out in 2014 on October 10th. Okay, and I'll do more research, see if I can figure out if that's true or not. You know, and then this Deadpool, that's the wrong one. I had another one sitting around here with a J. Oh, here's a JJL date right here. 2017, 10-4. So 2017, uh, October 4th. That's what I think it means. Um... Another thing I mentioned is that if the picture's on here, that means it's old, as in 11, 12, 13. I thought they stopped printing these. Obviously, 14, they still did it. 
I thought that was a sign that it had to be very old. I stumbled across this Game of Thrones. Arya, um, she's actually out of the box right now, but 09, number 09, Game of Thrones is from is from the you know edition two. It's got a picture on the bottom, 2017, which is very surprising to me. So, um, I don't know how that picture thing works. Obviously, it doesn't affect the value, I don't believe. Um, but the, the codes, I think I'm starting to get that figured out. The only other code, like I said, is this FAC code. And these are different. I don't know if you can see that one or not. But FAC 03-4564-15213. Now, when it has an FAC sticker like this, the second number, 034564, is always the same. I think it's like a inventory code for Bunko Pop. I don't know. But the last number is always different. It's a five-digit number as opposed to a six-digit number. But it still starts with a number in the teens. So this one says 15213. So my guess on that is this came out in 2015. And then 213, I believe, is a Julian date. What that means is 2015, 213th day of the year. So if you do the math, you know, sometime in July, it's like July 20th or something, some, somewhere in there. You know, and then I got another FAC one right here, that guy, same second number, and that's 15280. So 2015, 280th day of the year, you know, you're talking September. I could be completely wrong, but that's all I can come up with. Like I said, I'm going to do a little research, and if I find something different, or more definitive, I will share that. So, uh, that's it for all of my uh, corrections and explanations and uh, whatnot. I'm going to wrap this video up with a few boxes. i got a whole bunch of singles here. And uh, we'll, do those, we'll do a few of those right now. And Carmelo still does not care. Do ya? I'm going to pop this one open first. Um, again, all you sellers out there, shippers out there, this isn't a good idea. You don't want to take your your box, your Funko box, and find a box exactly the same size, like a like a uh, like a sorter box, and send it that way. Because you know, Mr. Postman drops this, you know, crump. This corner goes in. Guess what other corner is going in? This one. So you always want to have a bigger box with a little bit of packing material in there so it can take a crush and it won't wreck what's inside. I mean, this thing is so wedged in here that, yeah, not a good idea. We got Thanos, Guardians of the Galaxy, number 78. This is the original guy before all the Avengers movies. And this is the Entertainment Earth exclusive glow-in-the-dark version. Uh, I believe his face and his hands glow. Um, now, this might look familiar. I know it looks familiar to me. It looks very familiar. We just got this guy a few weeks back. And this is what uh, Funko will do sometimes. You know, they'll make a small change. Entertainment Earth will just, will just take the mold and they'll just crank out more of the same and they'll make it glow in the dark. So, if that bothers you, Dave, why do you buy this? Well, because I'm a goddamn completionist, and uh, it was 11 bucks. So, got both versions of this Thanos. And, you know, if it was 2019 and this product came out, there'd probably be a flocked Thanos, a Diamond Edition Thanos, maybe a Chase Glitter Thanos. Funko's got a little carried away the last few years, so... Um, as far as I know, these are the only two versions of this particular pop. But that's pretty cool. You have both. Yeah, it's interesting, the sides are different. This one has the marble under the pop. This has it next to it. Backs are identical. The side has that same deal going on. And then the front... The original had the marble under the pop. This one did not. 
But as I'm talking about that, I'm glancing at both these boxes for the, um, you know, bootleg or not bootleg, uh, type of things you look for. They both look legit. You know, it's kind of funny, you know, this one goes down to the bottom, this one doesn't. This has the age, 3+, plus. this one doesn't. This one's thicker around his head, this one is not. Um... If I didn't know any better, one of these would not be, one of these would be fake, one of them would be real, but uh, I'm pretty sure they're both real. This isn't uh, the kind of a character that they'd go to the trouble to make fakes of in the first place, so. But that is funny, they talk about all those kind of things to look for fakes. One of the most, uh, the ones you can glance at and know in a heartbeat, they say, is this white outline, which clearly this is thicker than this one. But the outline on the cheer here is pretty thick, too. So, um, you know, I'm not sure about that. All the tips and tricks as far as looking out for fakes, looking out for bootlegs and stuff like that, I don't know if they're all legit. If if some of them just, sometimes, you know, Funko just changes up what they do, you know, changes up the, the look. You know, right here you can see the first Thanos was was an older one. It has the old logo. This looks like 2015, January 27th. And this one starts with FM. Go figure. The Entertainment Earth exclusive Glow in the Dark has the new logo. So there's no um, date sticker. And instead of the 3 plus in the corner, it tells you on the bottom. Says not to use it for infants, zero to three. That one does too. I mean, these are, you know, these, these box bottoms are completely different. But you know, one is one is 2015, and I'd imagine this one is 2017, 2018. I'm not sure. But I just thought I'd point out those differences and the fact that that doesn't always mean you have a fake on your hands. Because I'm pretty sure there are not bootlegs of the six-inch Thanos. He's just never been in demand enough to want anyone to go to that trouble. So, that's interesting. Alright. I'm going to open this single right here. we got another ad icon. Captain Crunch, 36. I talked about this guy when we got our other Captain Crunches. When we got Captain Crunch and Crunchberry, the back of the box had these three. They came out with this one, which is like Sword Captain Crunch, and they added him to the back of the box. Interestingly enough, they don't have 20 on here, which is the Cosmic Captain Crunch. He falls in between these two, but... Like I said, there are six Captain Crunches, to my, to my knowledge. These four, Cosmic, and the 10-inch. We need the Foot and the Cosmic. We have the other four. So that's good. Let's see what's in here. This is a good one. This is uh, Star Wars. It falls in that area we've been trying to complete. This is number 99, Smuggler's Bounty, Ben Kenobi. That's the old Ben, basically from, from the first movie. They show a weird variety on the back. Basically, all OG uh, people. I guess uh, these are all characters from the original movie as well. Well, not all of them. Clone Trooper, clearly not. But most of these are from the 1977 film. These three are Return of the Jedi. A New Hope. A New Hope, A New Hope. Episode 2, I guess. But there he is, Ben. Alec Guinness, Sir Alec Guinness, excuse me. Looks a lot like Sir Alec Guinness right there, too. Definitely does not look like Ewan McGregor. Okay, we got a sorter box here. 
Oh, this one's cool. This one's cool. Avengers Infinity War. Marvel number 380. It's the Lights Up Iron Man. Which they actually have a window. So you can check out how badass that is. Light up. Pops. Gotta love it. It's just missing uh, goofy little sounds to go with it. But there's that little trimey window. It's pretty funny. Um, and then there's the back. He's like standing on some rocks or something. Cool box. Different style box. I like it. This one I opened, took a glance at. Think I might save him for last. Unless something crazier comes comes about. Got a sorter box here. A mystery. We all love mysteries. Oh. He won't be excited about this one. We got box lunch exclusive. Flocked. And it is a nice block job. Not a whole lot of overspray or... Looks good. Cheer Bear. Number 351 from Pop Animation. We don't collect a whole lot of animation. We just collect what we like on that side. There's the six originals they came out with. They've done, uh, you know, chase versions, flocked versions, uh glitter, etc. for all, I believe all six of these have a variation. And then they got some other Care Bears, a Halloween one, uh, like an America Bear. Um, I'm not sure. I think there's 10, 11, maybe 12 Care Bears. But they're pretty cool. Who doesn't like Cheer Bear? How do you not get a smile on your face when you see Cheer Bear? Alright. We should do maybe two more. And then I'll get to this last one. Interesting. Okay. What we have here sealed Funko Soda. This is our first one. Most of these you see online, they've already been opened um, because people want to get the chase. Um, these are all limited. They made 10,000 of these, this particular can. And how it works is, I believe, I believe it's like the old one in six formula. Uh, out of the 10,000, there's going to be like eight, you know, 8,000 or so, maybe 8,500. Chili Willies, and then there'll be, you know, 1,500 maybe, or 2,000 of the Chase Edition, which they don't show you what it looks like. Um, I have seen Chili Willie Chase, and I think it's, he's, he looks like he's frozen. It's like a, it's like a bright blue, kind of a translucent blue, I think. Really cool. But even if it's the base one, that'd be alright. We don't have one of these yet, so. Now, you know what? You don't even have to open this bag to know whether you uh, have the real one or not, uh, or the chase or not. There's always a coin. Dump the coin out. And it tells us one of 8,400 Chili Willie, the regular one. So if you open this bag, There he is. That's pretty cute. <laughs> the soda characters are different. They got a different, uh, different look to them. They're not at all like pops. Some of them I like. Some of them I'm not wild about. Um, but that's, that chili willy there is is pretty neat.
got a soda. Okay, this is a good one to open before the last one. <coughs> we got C-3PO Blue Box, number 13. Um, this isn't uh, an original original, it's it's newer, you know, it's uh, looks like 2017. I might be wrong about those dates. I don't think they were making Blue Box in 2017, but I could be wrong. No, I guess they were. They did that whole vaulted black box thing just a few years ago. So this is like one of the last Blue Box they, they were making, I believe. But again, what you really want as far as like value, what the collectors go after with these is it's going to just say C-3PO and it's going to say Vinyl Bobblehead in bigger letters. There will not be any other languages here. There will not be any warning here. It's going to be really simple. You know, it's the way the old, the OG DC, the OG Marvel ones, they're all the same like that. They have the name of the guy and big letters, Vinyl Bobblehead or Vinyl Figure. And those are the ones the collectors go crazy for. That's, that's proof that it's a real OG blue box. Now me, uh, just trying to complete the blue box set. I don't really care if it has a picture on the bottom. I don't care what it says right here. I don't care that this is a newer version of the blue box. I just want the blue box collection. And um, other than the ones that cost 500 plus, there's a few of those. We're getting we're getting there. Now this one, you know, C3PO a little more common. Obviously, more popular. They probably cranked out a lot of these, just like the Princess Leia, 04 Princess Leia, 05 Stormtrooper, um, 03 Han Solo. The, the real popular figures they made a lot of. Um, this one, very cool, but not as popular as C3PO. This is the Blue Box Biker Scout. Number 38 of the set. And he looks pretty good. He looks nice. So that's 38. They show those six on the back. We just got the Emperor last week. We've had these three for a while, just got the Biker Scout, so all we need for this six-piece set is Mr. Bosk. And he can be pricey, he can be close to 100. I've seen him, I've also seen him down 50, 60, so we'll be looking for a deal on Bosk. This guy here, I think normally 40, 50 range. I don't even know what, what we paid for him, but usually I don't, I don't just jump on these blue boxes, usually I look for a decent deal, so we're getting a little value out of them. So there you have it. That's it for today. Opened plenty of boxes. Uh, I rambled on and on at the beginning about uh, about Fanta Soda and the, the whole Green Giant Sprout escapade and the bottom of the boxes, which I'm still confused by. Um, real quick, in the background is 3-2, The Wicked Buddha Baby. This is an old classic Rap-A-Lot Records release from 96. Back when rap -a -Lot was just kind of, you know, blowing up in Texas. This is actually the same person. Not not a very well-known rapper, not a very well-known album, but I love this guy. Every tune is just laid back. I feel like going for a drive. Pretty good stuff. So, signing off from the dungeon, I'm Dave. Carmelo's still here. He slept through the whole thing. But um, we'll see you next time.